Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 13th March 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see the today's quote. Today's quote is by Nelson Mandela. So this quote it is regarding our education. So Nelson Mandela says, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. So if you are writing any essay regarding the change, you can write the quote of Mahatma Gandhi regarding change and even Nelson Mandela, right? So if you want to change the world, the one weapon that is present in our hands is education. So what kind of change we want to bring in the world? So for example, if you want to eradicate poverty, so if you want to eradicate hunger, so initially government can take some steps, right? It can provide some subsidized food grains, especially to come out of hunger. And even regarding poverty, government can bring some alleviation, poverty alleviation schemes like providing livelihood, etc. But ultimate weapon is education. So whenever proper education that we are providing, then that will be helpful to bring the change in the world. Right. So now let us try to see first topic. So title says Pakistan seeks joint probe to missile incident. So what happened unfortunately, accidentally. So one missile which mainly fired in India, which entered into Pakistan and finally it fall in Pakistan. Right. So this incident which mainly happened recently. So regarding this incident, India from Indian side, we gave explanation to Pakistan. But here Pakistan says that we need a joint probe into this missile incident. So this article, it is important regarding GS paper to under international relations. So if you see context, it mainly says that Pakistan rejected the explanation which mainly offered by India. So this explanation which is regarding accidental firing of a missile. So from Indian side, missile which mainly fired and what happened accidentally so this missile which mainly entered into this Pakistan and finally it mainly ended up in our neighboring country and demanded a joint investigation to this accurately establish the facts. So what was the explanation which is given from Indian side so it is not accepted by Pakistan and Pakistan said that we need a joint probe to investigate into the facts of this missile firing. So this is the image of that missile. So if you see background, so this background I took from Indian Express, not from today's Hindu. So Pakistan mainly claimed an unarmored Indian supersonic missile took off from Sirsa and which mainly landed at 124 kilometers within this Pakistan territory. So it is a supersonic missile. So let me know what is this supersonic means. Okay, so already we discussed about the supersonic number of times. So let me know what is a supersonic. Okay, actually this missile which mainly fired off the Sirsa and it mainly landed in Pakistan territory. That too in this 124 kilometers within this Pakistan territory. And actually so this missile which is mainly sailing at height of 40,000 feet and endangered passenger flights in the both Indian and Pakistan airspace and also civilians and even property of the ground as well. So it is a very high speed because it is supersonic. So because of this high speed, what happened? It mainly entered accidentally into this Pakistan territory. And Pakistan says that it mainly violated Pakistan's airspace. And if you're talking about which are the agreements talking about this missile testing between the two countries. So if you're focusing especially regarding this India and Pakistan, so we have this 2005, 2005 agreement and this agreement which mainly talks about if there is any flight testing of any ballistic missile is happening. So if India wants to fire this missile, so India need to intimate this information to Pakistan at least three days in advance. Either it may be surface to surface or land or sea launched missiles. So according to this 2005 agreement, so whenever any missile testing which, miss, which is going to happen, okay, so that country need to give information in advance at least three days. 
so even this agreement which also says that if launch sites should not fall within 40 kilometers from either the international boundary or line of control as you know that between india and pakistan we have this line of control so if india which is mainly firing missile means it should not fall beyond 40 kilometers from this line of control so in the same way if pakistan which mainly fires means it should be not beyond this 40 kilometers from this line of control so but it is now 140 24 kilometers so it is mainly violated in this 2005 agreement between india and pakistan okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding one important scheme vibrant village scheme so title says villages across china border to open for tourism so this article which is mainly talking about this vibrant village scheme so here we need to know some facts regarding this scheme so this will be important regarding GS paper to under governance point of view. And when we are talking about India-China border, so it is also important from our international relations point of view as well. So if you see context, it mainly says that unit government which mainly plans to open villages across this Chinese border. Okay, let us consider this as Indo-China border. So across this Indo-China border, there are number of states which are present in Indian side, we are mainly sharing boundary with this China. So in those states, we are going for development. So that will be helpful, especially to attract a more number of tourists. So this program that is Vibrant Village Scheme. So it is mainly announced in our union budget 2022 to 2023. So now let us try to go deep into details. So if you see details, it mainly says that recently our union home ministry which mainly held a meeting with public representatives of villages from the states like Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh and as well as Union Territory of Ladakh. So these are the states which are mainly sharing boundary with China, right? So in these states, especially representative from the villages from these states, they went for meeting, okay? So and even in the recent budget, so budget provisions for this programs had also been sent to this expenditure finance committee okay so what amount of the budget that should be placed for this so and so scheme so that also sent to this expenditure finance committee for approval of this scheme and if you're talking about Ladakh especially some villages of this Ladakh which are uh, in this Chang Tang region they can be turned into a dark sky destination that even that could attract astronomy enthusiastic not only tourists but even astronomy related enthusiasts they can be attracted to this Ladakh region because if you see the terrain of this Ladakh it is a rough terrain it is a very tough and we need to take some several measures mainly that will be helpful improving of facilities so whenever terrain it is rough means we need to go for further extra expenditure here so if you are talking about any plains area so whenever any plain area if you want to go for development in this plain so the time will be less required and even investment will be less but if the same area which is mainly having some hills mountain areas and if you want to go for laying of roads in this areas means it will be a very difficult and it will be a time taking process and even we need high expenditure as well so in this vibrant village program so this scheme which is mainly related to livelihood generation so how livelihood generation so whenever if you are developing any area and we are attracting more number of tourists so in this area we can go for generation of livelihood for the local people there and even whenever we are going for development that will be helpful for road connectivity even that will be helpful for rural areas rural infrastructure housing we can focus on even renewable energy television broadband uh, connections etc so in these areas so this scheme which is mainly focusing and even parliamentary committee on home fights also recommended for example that all the villages in Ladakh particularly especially the zero border such as Chumar, Demchok they should be electrified as well so whenever we are going for development in rural areas that will help to stop migration so if you're talking about migration migration means nothing but people are moving from rural areas to urban areas especially in search of some livelihood some jobs etc 
so when you are talking about migration we need to think about pull factors and as well as push factors you will be studying in your geography and if you are reading your ncrt then you might be come across this push factors and pull factors as well right and even according to the report it mainly says 236 habitable villages in ladakh and out of this only 172 they have telecom infrastructure and only 24 and 78 villages they have 24 villages or having 3g Uh, okay third generation internet connectivity and 78 villages have in this 4g internet connectivity so now let us try to talk about some facts regarding this vibrant village program so actually this program which mainly launched to improve infrastructure in villages so in which villages so these villages it are mainly present in this india china border so they are mainly located in state like uttarakhand himachal pradesh arunachal pradesh and union territory of ladakh as well so under this program especially we are going for residential and tourist centers they will be constructed and we are focusing on road connectivity and we are focusing on development of decentralized renewable energy sources as well right so if you are talking about what are the important objectives of this scheme so first one here is it is mainly focusing on upgrading of housing facilities and we are going for strengthening of infrastructure across this lac region and it it is mainly focusing to prevent migration as well so these are some important objectives of this vibrant village scheme so this objectives might be a potential prelims question right and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding maternal child health so recently maternal mortality report released so in this report which mainly says that in india kerala states top in this maternal and as well as child health so this data which we are going to discuss now that you can use in your mains answer and even in your essay so this article it is very important from your mains point of view and even from prelims you can get a question regarding what is this mmr maternal mortality rate right and now let us try to see context if you see context it mainly says that kerala again emerged as a one of the top in maternal and as well as child health so here you need to understand what are the reasons that led to the top position of kerala in india so if you are knowing reasons so we can implement the steps which are taken by this kerala state to decrease this mmr in other states where we can see high mmr is present such that if you are implementing or if you are taking proper steps that had been shown some success in some other state and whenever we are implementing those in our state means so for sure we can see some improvement okay in decreasing of this mmr so if you see context it mainly says that as i said kerala emerged as a top in maternal and child health okay and it is mainly reg uh, recording like a very low maternal mortality rate and it is like 30 okay 30 30 deaths per 1 lakh live births in the country so if you are talking about this maternal mortality rate we can connect with even our important sustainable development goals and even millennium development goals so here in the sustainable development goal it mainly talks about even health so we can connect this with that sustainable development goal as well right and if you see some details it mainly says that according to the latest according to the latest sample registration system that is srs special bulletin it mainly says that maternity uh, maternal mortality rate that is mmr in 2017 2019 so this results which mainly brought up by this rgi that is registrar general of india and in this data which mainly says that kerala in kerala which is mainly topping okay in this in the country and it mainly decreased 12 points now it is like 30 mmr and if you are talking about what are the initiatives which are mainly came up by this kerala government so here kerala government came up with the, actually the quality standard in this obstetric care so obstetrics means nothing but pregnancy right so if you are going to any hospital related to female you can see gynecologist and obstetrics right so gynecologist is regarding the women health and obstetrics means 
pregnancy and preg after pregnancy that is post pregnancy uh, it is also taking care of a newborn that is neonate okay so obstetrics and gynecologists that this common board that you can see in hospitals especially dealing with this women health so actually what happened so the kerala government which mainly understand about this obstetric care and it mainly came up with improving of quality of standards in this obstetric care right and actually they understand what are the common causes for this maternal death that means after giving birth to child so what are the reasons that will leads to increasing of the death cases in the women so for example is postpartum hemorrhage so postpartum hemorrhage means what happened so as a medical students i can give you some explanation regarding what is this postpartum so actually this is the uterus okay so this uterus it is nothing but we can say like womb so in this uterus 9 months it will mainly carry the fetus and finally what happen delivery of baby will be happen so i am trying to explain in layman term not in the medical terminology so what happen the baby inside the womb uh, that baby will be getting nutrients from the mother through placenta right so during the birth of the child the child will be removed right so what happen whenever this placenta it is removed some part of uterus will also be torn off so because of this storing of this some um, part of placenta here so that will leads to blood loss okay whenever there is any injury means you can see the blood will be coming out so in the same way after the removing of this placenta and some some parts which are present in the womb after the 9 months that is delivery so that will be causing some injury to the wall of uterus so because of this after the after the birth okay after the birth or uh, after the delivery that pregnant woman she will be experiencing blood loss so whenever there is heavy blood loss so if there is no proper care which is mainly taken up by the woman after delivering of baby so what happened they, that might be leads to increasing of this postpartum hemorrhage so whenever a lot of amount of blood which is lost in the body means all the tissues they will be not getting proper amount of oxygen because in the blood we will be having hemoglobin so this hemoglobin it is responsible for the red color of our blood and even the important role of this hemoglobin it is to carry oxygen so because of this loss of blood what happen we can see there is less amount of oxygen will be supplied to our essential organs that will leads to organ damage and next one is even pregnancy is induced hypertension so in the pregnancy time also the blood flow will be very much high and even if you are comparing with a normal woman with the pregnant woman so in the pregnant woman heart beat will be very much high right so because heart need to pump the blood that is necessary for the woman and even for the fetus right so here because of this pregnancy in the hypertension and even during the pregnancy or labor so some women they experience seizures so because of that also that will lead to increased high risk of a woman death and even after after delivery so whenever the woman who is uh, she is not taking proper care and that will leads to infection of the uterus that is called as septicemia or sepsis that is also leads to death and even whenever there is amniotic fluid amniotic fluid is nothing but whenever uh, baby which is present inside the womb so baby will be covered by one layer so inside that layer it is called as um, fluid which is present that is called as amniotic fluid so whenever amniotic fluid embolism is happening means that will be also leads to higher risk of this maternal mortality or the mother death so these are the some important causes for this maternal death okay during this pregnancy and regarding these common causes for this maternal death so they started taking some quality standards of care okay and actually they started taking some quality standards of care and that led to substantial reduction of deaths in the women due to sepsis that is due to infection and even that is pih that is pregnancy induced hypertension and even postpartum hemorrhage but what happened so they control this pih sepsis etc but the postpartum hemorrhage is one of the important cause and the serious concern which is continuing and it is leading to deaths in this kerala as of now so if we are talking about some facts regarding this mmr that is maternal mortality rate it is mainly defined as number of maternal deaths during a given time per 1 lakh live births so whenever 1 lakh live births are happening so how many women they are dying so this ratio it is called as 
maternal mortality rate within a time period. And if you are talking about our sustainable development goal that is 3.1 which mainly set by United Nations, it is mainly focusing to decrease this global maternal mortality rate and globally it should be less than 70 per 1 lakh live births. And if you are talking about what are the government initiatives, especially government of India which mainly came up to control this maternal mortality rate. So for example, so government which is mainly trying to increase institutional births. So institutional births it is nothing but institutional deliveries or institutional births means nothing but. So pregnant women they need to go for giving birth in hospitals. Because normally in ancient times and even in your olden days, even I think your grandmother, some of your mothers, they went for delivery in home and there will be one old person who will be doing this delivery. So normally called as mantrasani, right? So here what happens whenever these people who are doing delivery means sometimes there will be the increased, increased sepsis or infections that we can see. If institutional births means that will be conducted by doctors and as well as nurses in the hospitals and they will be giving some medicines especially to decrease the pain and even to they will be monitoring the BP that is a blood pressure and even they will be giving if there is any need of sutures they will be going for cutting and they will be going for sutures and if normal delivery it is not going to happen they will be going for c-section cesarean section so here whenever we are going for institutional deliveries that will mainly decrease the risk of this maternal mortality rate so for this government came up with this janane suraksha yojana under this national health mission and this one is government came up with this pratana mantri Surakshit Matritva Abhiyan. So it mainly provides some fixed day for assured and comprehensive quality antenatal care. That is after uh, antenatal care will, will be given for the pregnant woman on the 9th of every month. And government also came up with this Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana and even Laksha guidelines. So these are the some steps which are mainly taken by government of India to decrease its maternal mortality rate. Right. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding children more unlikely to produce antibodies. So this article which is mainly talking about antibodies in children due to this COVID-19. So this article it is important from our GS paper 3 under science and technology. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So recently a small study and this study which include 108 participants and in this include 57 children and as well as 51 adults and in this study they found that whenever we are comparing children with adults so children they are having okay higher population or higher proportion of children that we take here so they do not they did not produce antibodies so they did not produce antibodies when we are comparing with adults so now let us try to see details regarding this study so all of this 108 participants they were either asymptomatic or some of them they were having a very mild symptoms and in the study they found there is lack of antibodies in the children okay if you are comparing with adults and children children they didn't produce antibodies unlike the adults so the study looked at the ability of adults and as well as children to produce antibodies whenever they are infected with this coronavirus okay and if you're talking about what are the reasons why children didn't produce these antibodies so children they will be having very stronger and as well as faster response to infection than compared to that of adults so because of this they didn't produce these antibodies so this might be the first reason and second one is that would mean that children they are able to clear virus so quickly so whenever virus which is coming and infecting these children so because of stronger and faster response of children so they are able to clear this virus very quickly so because of this their immune system it is not triggered to produce antibodies against that virus okay so even even one more important reason that mainly found in the study here is children they have more robust innate and as well as mucosal immune response to virus and that will be helpful mainly to clear the virus very quickly without producing antibodies Okay, so this is about the study. So what is the inference? The inference here is because of lack of seroconversion, that is lack of producing antibodies in the children. 
so it might leads to high susceptibility for this reinfection so children are susceptible to this reinfection so this is gist of this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding crispr patent ruling so this article which is mainly talking about crispr sas9 gene editing tool so i think you might know about this crispr sas9 right so actually in 2018 also one question in uh, our ups prelims it appeared regarding this crispr sas9 so the question is very simple that is crispr sas9 is seen in news what is is related to it is editing tool it is gene editing tool so this article it is important regarding gs paper 3 under science and technology so now let us try to see context it mainly says that the us patent office has awarded key patent rights related to this crispr sas9 gene editing tool so what happened regarding this crispr sas9 us patent office which mainly gave patent rights to broad institute team actually what happened in 2020 the nobel prize which mainly awarded regarding this crispr sas9 okay so because of this there is some puzzle which is happening so as of now we need to know about what is this crispr sas9 and how it works so actually this crispr now let us try to understand how this crispr works and we have sas9 so sas9 it is a protein form okay so this sas9 which mainly forms a protein complex and this complex which mainly guides the rna in a cell so this complex which mainly attaches to the genome of dna okay and later on this uh, this sas9 rna complex it mainly cuts this double stranded dna and that will leads to some programming dna and we can reinsert at the cut as well so this is about the sas9 and i can give you one question regarding this uh, crispr sas9 the question it is regarding means not from prelims okay so question is the gene editing tool has indeed taken life sciences into a new epoch so however like other scientific development it can turn out to both as a boon or bane discuss so please try to write answer in the comment box okay so now let us try to see next topic it is regarding in search of past life so this article which is talking about this nasa perseverance rover so again this topic it is important from science and technology which mainly comes in the gs paper 3 so now let us try to talk about this topic in a very great detail so now let us try to understand why this nasa's perseverance rover is in news so if you are talking about context so nasa's perseverance rover is all set to move towards the edge of mars zero crater okay so what is this crater so whenever any asteroid or in a, whenever any space object which is mainly coming and falling on the surface that will be falling a depression and that depression is called a crater and even what happen not only the surface of the any thing like planet for example even in the volcanoes also we can see the top depression is called as crater so such volcanoes are called crater volcanoes and that crater volcanoes further they will form as a crater lake right so this topic you might have studied in your geography if you are completed your ncert you might be knowing about this crater very well so if you see context it mainly says that so this nasa's perseverance rover it is mainly moving towards this mars zero crater and it is mainly going to collect some important rock samples so if you see details it mainly says that so this rover which is mainly exploring the floor of the crater and collecting more than a half dozen rock samples from this crater and after studying the samples the none of the samples have been showing about appear of a deposited layer of water okay and this delta which is mainly expected to contain some fossilized evidence of past life so if you are talking about some facts regarding this perseverance rover so this rover which may be launched on july 2020 and the important task of this perseverance rover it is to seek or collect the data regarding whether there is any ancient life which is present or not and they will going to collect some rocks regoliths and they will be going to study and they will be telling about whether ancient life which is mainly present on this mars or not and if you are talking about this perseverance rover which mainly failed by 
electrical power by uh, by using heat of plutonium radioactive decay and even they get some memory alloys uh, to remain steady on the surface of the mars and this rover which mainly contains arms drills and as well as uh, uh, cameras lasers etc that will helps to explore the mars okay so now let us try to see next topic it is regarding a meteorite in a desert so actually it is talking about meteorite so in geography you will be coming across some keywords like meteors meteorite and meteoroid so you need to know difference between these three terms so it will be absolutely very important from your prelims point of view so this topic it is also important regarding gs paper 1 and the geography so now let us try to see context why it is in news so scientists they mainly found okay scientists mainly found an x sized meteorite it is in 5 square kilometers area in western australia so in this western part of australia in 5 kilometers of area they found a normally x sized meteorite okay and this mainly found using some drones and neural network yes again one prelims question can be framed here is so what are the, which are the following or the applications of drones so here it can be also used to study meteorite as well so you have to add this new application of this drones so if you see details it mainly says that after meteor hunting cameras which mainly spotted a fireball last year and they used the drone whether there is any meteorite which is mainly fall on the earth surface or not and finally they found x sized meteorite in this area so if you see this image you can see whenever any rock substance which is present in the space that is called as meteoroid and whenever it is mainly falling into our atmosphere and it will be burned because of resistance and that is called as meteor so after burning if there is anything which is left and falling on the earth surface that is called as meteoroid okay so this is about this topic and now let us try to see yesterday's question so first one it is regarding zamindari system so with reference to zamindari system consider the following statements so first one is the zamindars were made up uh, were made the owner of land as long as they paying the revenue to the company yes of course zamindars were allowed to sell or purchase the land and evict persons in the case of non payment of rent yes zamindars had invested in the improvement of land and crop pattern so that they can maximize their profit they didn't invested so you can eliminate this third statement the correct statement will be 1 and 2 only and next question is regarding brahma samaj so actually you know that brahma samaj which mainly established by raja ram mohan roy so first statement here is samaj was open to all castes and creeds absolutely correct brahma is the supreme immortal soul from whom all humans were originated so brahma's idol or image can be used for his worship not at all because in this brahma samaj no idol worship images statues painting sacrifice and religious rituals will be conducted here so the second statement is incorrect so you can eliminate this second statement so correct option will be 1 and 3 and let us have a look over this third statement too so the worship was per- performed through prayers mediation readings from upanishad yes okay so this is about today's questions and today's questions the first one is regarding dalhousie regarding women disability and widow remarriage act of 1856 so read the statements and give me the correct option and next question is regarding this rayathwari system so try to give me the correct options for these two questions so before seeing this uh, today's hindu newspaper pdf so let me make a small announcement so we in rathore's is we launched this prelims test series and even we are coming up with this pen drive course for complete foundation course of 2023 so in this course it is exclusive benefit for the beginners and as well as who already gave their attempts in this upsc so here we are discussing each and every topics each and every topic in our syllabus and we ensure you there is a conceptual clarity so here in this courses i am dealing with ethics and as well as geography personally so if you want to take those subjects you can visit our website rathore's is academy if you are visiting our website for the first time it will ask to register with your email so give your email and there you can watch the demo videos and what are the courses that you have like polity history economy science and technology disaster management geography ethics 
they are absolutely beneficial for the students to understand the concepts because recently the trends of uh, UPSC had been changed it is not asking fact based questions it is started ask analysis based questions to answer those questions both in mains and prelims and even interview you need to have a conceptual clarity that conceptual clarity that we are providing in this Rathod's IES and the price is also very very affordable so you can purchase those courses and if you want to talk to me regarding these courses you can call me on this number 8074765513 okay and now let us have a look over this today's pdf of this hindu okay so this is our hindu pdf and the date here is march 13 2022 so first article it is regarding joint probe into missile incident we discussed that and next one here is commander talks which mainly fails to the end lac deadlock so actually what happened 15th round of this corps commander level talk which mainly held between india and china so it mainly failed okay for the next level of disengagement in this eastern ladakh actually the issue which is mainly not resolved regarding some conflicting points between india and china and next one it is regarding central allows census self enumeration so under this article we can study like union government amended this uh, census rules framed in 1990 it is mainly going to allow the details to be captured and stored in electronic format so this will be helpful for self enumeration okay so this is about this topic and we discussed about this villages along this china border it is about a vibrant village scheme and leave this city paper okay and if you move on to states okay yeah before that you have to see this maharashtra unlimited so i like this paper very much and if you are from state of maharashtra so please don't leave this paper you can see the historical caves which are present here in maharashtra so in maharashtra we have ajanta caves we have ellora caves pandavalini caves karla caves baja caves so you have to know about uh, this caves because in interview you will be getting a question from this area for sure and even you can see some adventurous hill stations in this Maharashtra for example Kolhapur, Nasik, Pune so in these areas we can see some stunting hill stations right and even there is a one important note on wildlife bird sanctuaries which are present in Maharashtra so we are having like six national parks in this Maharashtra like Sanjay Gandhi, Chanduli National Park, Dadoba National Park, Pench and Navegon Nazira and Gugamal National Park and even there are seven conservation reserves are present here so please read this newspaper especially this paper especially if you are from Maharashtra state and if you move further if you see this page that is states page here I discuss this Kerala tops this maternal child health okay I hope you are, you remember that and here this image which is very interesting to me so here this is about the ceremonial hearts okay it is also called as edupu kuthira uh, actually it is mainly through this astamudi lake okay so this is the thing which mainly seen in this astamudi lake so you have to locate where is this astamudi lake which is located in the map okay so that is important from geography and next article it is regarding japan pm to focus on quad stand on ukraine so here you need to revise about this quad and you have to know about whether they are going to shift so actually in this squad we have us we have japan india and australia so australia and usa they are mainly supporting to this ukraine and india which is mainly having a neutral stand so with, we have to see whether india's foreign policy is going to change or not okay and if you move further here you can see in search of first cosmic light so it is regarding the scientists at this raman research institute they mainly continuing some studies regarding a decade long quest okay and actually in the country of a billion phones now we are mainly focusing on the signals and we are mainly focusing on this 3g 4g and now we are talking about this 5g technology so in this uh, in this cause of in this uh, in this in this situation so here we need to focus on this uh, cosmic light as well so the researchers they are mainly doing some studies regarding this and leave this assembly polls don't need of reading this assembly polls and here you can see one article regarding this sanctions could cause space station to crash ross cosmos so here as you all know due to this russia ukraine crisis so sanctions which are mainly imposed on us 
ओके सॉरी सैंक्शन विच आर मेनली इम्पोज बाय यू एस एंड एज वेल एज अदर यूरोपियन कंट्रीज ऑन रशिया सो नाउ रशिया से इज दैट वेन एवर देर इज सैंक्शन विच आर इम्पोज सो देर विल बी द क्रैशिंग ऑफ दिस इंटरनेशनल स्पेस स्टेशन विच इज मेनली गोइंग टू बी हैपन सो दिस थिंग विच मेनली सेट बाय दिस रस कॉस्मोस right and if you see the science and technology i discussed important articles here yes and now if you see this faq page you can see geneva convention here so geneva convention in russia ukraine war so you can get a question like this geneva convention is seen in news what it is related to so in this context you need to know what is this geneva convention so geneva convention it is nothing but okay i hope you can see now so this geneva convention is nothing but still it is a set of four treaties so actually this geneva conventions which is mainly focusing on ethical and as well as legal international standards and it is mainly focusing on especially humanitarian treatment uh, mainly for the people who are impacted by the war for example it mainly talks about non combatants prisoners of war and use of conventional biological and chemical weapons so this will comes under this geneva protocol so you have to know about what is this first geneva Pro, uh, convention protects and second convention third convention as well as a fourth convention so if we talking about this first geneva convention it mainly talks about wounded and as well as sick soldiers on the land during the war and this convention which mainly extends medical and as well as religious personal medical units medical transport so this is the thing which mainly talks about this first geneva convention and the second which mainly talks about protecting of wound sick and as well as shipwrecked military personnel at the sea during the war and next one is third geneva convention which mainly applies to the prisoners of war okay and it mainly talks about general protection humane treatment maintenance and equality across the prisoners and talks about conditions of captivity questioning and evacuation of prisoners transit camps food clothing medicine hygiene and right to religious uh, inten, uh, intellectual and physical activities of these prisoners and if you are talking about this fourth geneva convention and it mainly uh, applies to invasion of ukraine by russia military forces protecting of civilians okay so these are the some things regarding this geneva convention and you have to remember this first second third and fourth geneva convention so these are the some important articles that appeared in today's newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathod's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and don't forget to join the courses that we are offering in this rathod's is that will help you to clear this upsc for sure thank you so much